Hey everybody, Jason from iAnimate here. How's everybody doing? Hopefully you're doing fantastic. So in today's snippet, we're going to talk about the quadruped trot. So most animals, most quadruped animals have a, a very similar trot gait, which is the front right leg and the back left leg twin. They basically go at the same time. So the whole way through, they go like this, right? And then the opposite side go like this too, right? So the back leg on the left will be the same as the front leg on the right. So taking a look at our main keys here in Flipbook. So I basically go from here and I do the low, right? So this is the front right. And this is the back left, right? Twinning, right? So this is taking the weight right here, all right? And this leg is coming through swinging through over into this point right here, which is the back right leg right here. And this is the front left, right? So this leg and this leg are now twinning, right? So if you look at all the limbs, they're twinning, right? So every animal that I've studied so far followed this gait, except for camels. Uh, so when I was animating a camel, uh, well, we had three camels in the movie The Star by Sony. <clears throat> we, we had to study camels, right? So we, we want to try and get their gates correct. And when I first started playing around with the rig, I was trying to do a trot sort of like this without studying it, without looking it up on the internet or YouTube or whatever. Uh, I was just playing around with the rig and I was kind of going, hold on a second. The legs are really long. And if they did this sort of gait, they'd sort of bump into each other, you know? Uh, so I studied camel trotting, and this is what they do, which is so bizarre. So basically, the, the legs on either side, they twin, right? So basically, like the, the left side here twins with each other. So the legs follow a pattern like this on, on both sides. So let's watch this from YouTube. See? See what I'm saying? So basically, like this leg here, his left side twins with the front side of the left side as well, right? So the back leg and left leg, uh, front leg, twin. You know, they're completely twinning exactly the same time, right? So the same thing with the other side. So you have a look at some motion here, right? Now you can, I mean, if you wanted to split these up by one or two frames, uh, you can play around with that, but basically they're supposed to be at the same time so that you don't kind of fall into a, a canter or, or like starting to get into a gallop cycle. All right. So every animal that I've studied so far, so whether it's a horse, a cat, a dog, you know, everything that has four legs falls into this trot. And it's a really fun cycle because it kind of gives it a very happy go lucky kind of uh, way of of locomoting across the floor, right? So if I'm doing it, I always start with the the highs and lows of the cycle, right? So basically if I'm looking at this, so we've got the high, low, high, low, high, low. And then I plot this across, across where I'm actually animating, okay? So I'll know sort of like the distance of where it's actually gonna fall, right? So obviously this is gonna be going uh, sort of like this, right? You know, if it's, if it's translating through space. Right, so the high point will be there, low point will be there. And then I start to break it down from there, right? So if I look at my trot breakdowns here, this is basically coming down to the contact now, right? So again, twinning, twinning, right? So front, right, back, left, twinning over here. Okay, coming through. So that's our, our low point, right? And then coming up to the thrusting point right here. So that'd be thrusting forward. So again, front, right, back, left, right, thrusting up, and then into our in-air pose again, right? So we have this high, low, high, low kind of thing, right? And I try to, when I'm actually doing just a cycle, I try to keep it just up and down, right? So again, like with, with our uh, head rotations, uh, I'll keep the high and the low the same. So basically this is the same angle. And then on the way down, I'll drag slightly, right? Drag the the head just ever so slightly, right? And then on the way up, I drag going upwards, right? So kind of leading with the forehead, but maybe the muzzle might drag slightly. You don't want to over this, overdo this because otherwise it'll feel like the, the neck has got no bone structure at all and it feels too floppy, right? So if we watch this like a real time, 
we have that. Okay, and if I just end it, I get 16 because when I'm doing the cycle, you always want to do your first key and your last key is the same, so you can in between it correctly. All right, so if I end it at 16, then we'll fill the cycle a little bit better. I won't pause, okay? And then when I'm approaching the, the ears or the tail, I'm, I'm usually thinking where it's attached will be less flexible than the end, right? Uh, so like here, this will be attached to, to the rear end, right? So like whatever the rear end is doing, it's gonna drag that around, right? But the end is not attached to anything. So that's gonna have a little bit more overlap, right? So you'll get that kind of a feel, right? So whenever I'm doing a tail, I'll always leave that to the very end because it's sort of a, a secondary thing to the hind legs. Uh, so to the hind area of the, of the character. Right, so I want to get the timing of that right first and the highs and lows right first, and then I'll start to overlap the tail. Okay, and the same thing with the ears. Like I'll try to keep this point right here fairly stiff, right? It's, it's just kind of following, right? So there's, there's, you know, cartilage or whatever right here. So that's going to keep it a little bit more stable uh, and just sort of dragging with the head. And then the end is going to be a little bit more flexible. Okay, so we get that nice little drag right there. Right, and then when I in between it, so basically just going through all the, the in betweens. This is basically on twos right here, but if I break it down on ones, right now, if I end it just at the just before the cycle ends right there, then we get it nice and smooth. Right, so we can feel like the overlap on the tail, you know, breaking that down so that the tip has that nice drag to it, nice follow through as it comes up, right. So you get that nice little snap on the way down. I, sometimes I, I, I won't snap up as fast as like when I'm coming down, like it's almost like a whip, you know? So you kind of get that kind of a flick at the end, right? And then the way up, it's sort of dragging and then on the way down, it's sort of gravity and then a little flick. So I'll try to keep that in mind as I'm, as I'm working through it. But you can, you can feel sort of the head dragging on the way up. You can see like the pattern with the legs as they're twinning. And that is how I approach a trot.